Welcome, welcome to the live edition of Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. I was not live yesterday at 8.30, and you may also be watching this on a replay later on in the evening, but either or, thank you for joining me. Uh, big news, uh, we're putting together a show for Thursday night, it'll be on at 6 o'clock, and we're going to kind of um, celebrate having a million views, um, and we're bringing on Tina Tambour from the Cromford Market, Cromford Report. So not only her, we're bringing back uh, Rahima with uh, Go, Go Glee um, Investments, some other agents, and we're going to talk about where do you see the market going this summer? So it should be a lively discussion. So there's a whole panel of us. I'm calling it the Real Estate Roundup. So Join us. It's not going to be live. We're going to pre-record it, but we're going to put it out there for you. It should be a lot of fun. And if you like and comment, we're going to be giving away some fabulous prizes, the coveted price mortgage jacket. So what's going on in this market? We're seeing numbers really starting to improve. Is this going to last? Is it a spring fling? Is it going to fizzle out as soon as it gets warm? I don't know. Hello, Kellogg. Welcome. Um, but I have some numbers here that interest me. So first of all, you're seeing that mortgage rates are at 6.59. They came down a little bit. They didn't hit seven. That's a good thing. It, uh, you know, if we start getting up at seven, it kills the market. And uh, kind of reminds me of my favorite line in Princess Bride. Uh, he's not dead. He's mostly dead. Um, so they haven't put a bullet in the market yet. And everybody's hanging on every word about what's going to happen the next time the feds meet to raise rates or keep rates the same. The Fed future survey is showing that 93% of respondents feel they're going to go up a quarter of a point. You get into June and that number drops to only like 18 to 20% and 70% feel that in June, we're going to stay put. So we shall see those numbers, like we say, get baked into the cake. So we're going to watch that and see what happens. There was an interesting article that came out showing the top the most desired neighborhoods in our area. And as you can see, Scottsdale ranked number one. We won't go through all of them because there's 50. Hard to believe there's that many. The Zonda Heat Index is what it's called. Queen Creek, of all places, came in at second. And that's because there's a lot of new builds out there and people are scooping them up. Number three is Goodyear. Number four is Mesa. Again, new construction. Number five, Tonopah, average sales price, 290000 So they're getting this on number of closings. And Phoenix came in at three, at uh, number six. So those are just some interesting stats that I saw this morning. So where are we at? Monthly average sales price per square foot. It is not going down, my friend. If anything, in last week, it just kind of maintain. Now the sales price will tend to dip a little bit when you're looking at an average sales price as we get into summer because the luxury market starts to pull back a little bit. So that's going to pull down the average sales price of what we're seeing. And says, I don't know about those West Siders. Yeah, Keenan, you know, you got to draw a line somewhere, right? <laughs> Here's to the East side. So now look at the monthly average sales price per square foot. What's been going on? We saw this huge dip here, went from 305 down to 268. That was our big correction. And now we're back up to 285. So you kind of have to ask yourself, um, is this the only slide down we're going to see? And that's what everybody's watching and speculating about, because as you can see, and it doesn't take you much to get on YouTube, find out that this is indeed going to happen again because we're going to crash. And yet I'm not seeing anything that sees that's going to happen. We did have a major correction up here, interest rate driven. And uh, But it's interesting, since that peak, we've really only gone down about a half a percent. But I think there's some creativity that came into the market. And... Uh, why does the luxury market pull back every summer? Because those people are smart and they don't want to come out here in June and July. <laughs> they're in Europe or something. Or they're, they're anywhere but here. They're up north. Hello, Jackie. You mean the market ain't crashing? I don't see it yet. No, it does tend to slow down. That doesn't mean that the luxury market does not um, 
that the homes don't sell. But getting back to this chart here, um, you know, what are we seeing here? Because this was a tremendous run up here all the way from 2011. And I suppose if you just wanted to draw a simple trend line here, and real estate isn't all about charts, but that would be what you consider normal. This was a very intense run up. So I don't see us coming back down to that trajectory here. It's just not going to happen. Like the famous uh, um, Will Rogers once said, when asked about the best investment, he said, buy land. They quit making it a long time ago. I have a question here. How is Awatuki? And uh, we're going to take a peek at that for you in just a moment. Um, it is doing well. Here is the average list price again for active listings. And you can see that as of the first of the year, that started going up. And now it's kind of flatlining. So the people are not jumping on the bandwagon and starting to ask more for their homes. They, uh, I believe that there was some pricing that came in there that allowed people to give more concessions and offer you some money um, for to buy down your rate. But did you know that over 68% of the homes purchased in our market were purchased, purchased over two years ago? That'll tell you how much equity they have. So there's a lot of equity out there. People are able to be flexible. Here's our price reductions, price changes. They're going down. So people are finding that their homes are indeed moving. And this is the sales per month. Let's jump. You know what's sad here about this, uh, Mason? I can't break out Awatuki separately, unfortunately. Uh, they don't do it on, on the Cromford Market Index. Um, but you can see here, if you just look at a few areas, like let's look at Chandler, the sales per month, they've gone up since January. Everybody has, they kind of went down a little bit, but they went down because the availability of homes went down. Uh, the, one of the big standouts here is Gilbert and Gilbert has flown up more than most markets as far as sales per month. Again, dipped down a little bit. Some of that could be, um, uh, just like I say, availability of of homes. So Phoenix is doing the same thing. Nothing major going on there. Maricopa, um, you're the one that spiked up the most. That one really kind of surprised me. Now Maricopa has been suffering from if you're a resale down there with the, all of that new construction. So there were so many choices that their Crawford Market Index was down to bottom, like 50 to 60 with 100 to 110 being a seller's market, it was clearly a buyer's market down in Maricopa because you could just drive down the street, get yourself a good old new build. and uh, But you can see that their sales per month have really climbed up. Now, new construction is in that number, my friends. So Levine, same thing. A lot of new construction out there. And I suspect we will see the same thing in Buckeye and alas, we do. So there is some spikes in the areas where there's new construction. And um, we're not seeing any area yet where prices are going down. Our contract ratio is looking right here where it's climbing up and a balanced market. See how it's in the white zone right there? This is considered normal, normal, and we're just barely above that. Um, the Cromford market puts out a chart in uh, one of their presentations that's saying, when is a good time to buy and a good time to sell? And they indicate that as soon as you start to get slightly above a balanced market, that's when you should buy. And obviously you should sell when you start to see two consecutive dips like you did right here. That's telling you put the house on the market. And a lot of you got that message. A lot of you, when things started going down in November, jumped in and said, I'm getting out because I want to hang on to that equity. Some people made the mistake of saying, well, um, I'm going to, Zillow's telling me I'm up here, so that's what I'm going to market at. And it turned so quickly that they didn't get their asking price. So our price changes were absolutely nuts. And, uh, and we couldn't, um, and you could see it right here. And that's what happened. So here you can sit here and see July, September, uh, November. The price changes here in October were brutal because people priced too high and they had to come in and reduce them. So now we're getting down to 
I don't want to say it's normal, but it's close to normal. Um, and we have a comment here that Sean says, I can't sell till September. Not sure where everything will be. Sean, it's not looking. There isn't anything out there. It's Look, it's always going to be based on supply and demand, right, folks? And right now, our supply and demand numbers are not uh, – let me go to my favorite little chart here that I like to sh share with everybody. Let me go to the Cromford Index, supply versus demand. This has to change. So right down here, I'll pull out my handy-dandy magnifying glass. Right there, you can see demand going up, supply going down, Sean. So unless that has a fast reversal um, – I don't see the September market being much different. It's amazing how many people comment and say, well, I'm waiting till fall. Um, and you wonder, well, waiting for fall because you think rates are going to be lower, waiting for fall because you think that we're going to have more inventory and that's when you want to buy, uh, waiting to sell because you think rates will be lower. So there's all these moving parts. We don't really know for sure, but I don't see a scenario where all of a sudden in September that we are back down to, let's say, right here. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening because of the supply and demand that we see right now. Keenan says, with the market reversing course in just a matter of months. Well, the market reversed course when we went up to 7%. That's when things really changed. But what's interesting, and I want to touch on this again, is is we're only down a half a percent right now when you look at the mortgage rates. But I think people just got more, I don't want to say they got used to it, but you can still get rates in the high fives. And uh, um, you're getting more contributions towards buying your rate down. I think people just got a little more creative as far as figuring out how to get into a house and took advantage of when some of the prices came down. Keenan says, with the market reversing course in a matter of months, uh, you said here, I wonder if what happened last summer with prices is starting to happen now, going in the opposite direction. Well, let's look at the prices last summer. And that was here, August, there's May. I can't compare it to 2021 or 2022 at all. I like to erase those years because those were absolutely nuts. Sean says he'd like to sell, but he has a tenant. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people are stuck. A lot of people are stuck with either leases or just quite honestly, Sean, that beautiful little 2.75 interest rate or 3%. So um, I don't, when I look at 21 and 2022, this is what drives me nuts with some of the statistics that you see. They should completely erase those two years. For example, inventory is up 150% from what year? From our average, no, we're still way below. From 2021, 2022, yep, we're up over 150%. You've heard me say, I wish we were up 500%. But it's very uh, headline catching to compare our numbers now to the peak in 2022 and go, sales are down 48%. Well, yeah, but sales were absolutely nuts in 2022. 2021, they're even worse. You could not get a house unless you bid higher, waived your inspections, waived your appraisals. So from a both from a seller's perspective, you're probably upset that that party's done. Uh, but look at the people in Gilbert right now. They're not having a problem selling their home. It seems like every home I look at in Gilbert is kind of done in a matter of days if it's priced correctly. If it's not, and if it's junk, it's going to sit there. Um, I'm seeing that for sale by owners have drastically decreased. Uh, because for sale by owners are really active when the market is brisk. It's really easy to sell a house for sale by owner when everybody wants one. And I hope you got a chance to watch the for sale by owner video that I put out, kind of showing, you know, what to look for, what not to look for. Here's how to do it right. Here's what you need to be careful about. I mean, if you can sell your house by yourself without an agent, knock yourself out. I'm not going to say that you can't, that it's really dangerous, but there are certain things that if you're not aware of, you're going to you're going to have a hard time. So um, that video kind of lays it out for you to take a peek at. I hope you get a chance to look at that. So I think tell me in the comments where you think we're going to be in July and August, because we're sitting here right now. We're approaching May and May, I think, is going to be very strong because there's a, there are people that 
have to move. They're moving to another state. They want to be situated before school starts. Um, they, July in June and July in Phoenix is not as dead as you think it is, only in the luxury market. There's a lot of buying and selling going on in June and July. I've got the burns on my fingers uh, to prove it. Because when you go to get those lock boxes, you pull out that little black thing that holds the keys. I learned the hard way not to set it in the sun. I've seen agents actually wear gloves. Because <laughs> you pick it up and your skin fries before you put it back in a lock box. But why digress? So I think uh, I don't see anything on the horizon that's going to give people the incentive to list their home. Could there be a recession? Absolutely. It looks like there's going to be a recession, but recession seems to be a really ugly word right now that as soon as you get a recession, which is a contraction in economic activity, that everything's going to heck in a handbasket. And uh, good morning, Stephanie. Uh, not necessarily true. I mean, we could have a contraction of 1.5% in GDP, and that's technically called a recession, and house prices could stay the same. We could have some high unemployment across the country, but not have high unemployment here in Arizona. We could see some of the new projects that are coming on maybe be put on hold, and that could affect pricing. But I don't see anything that shouts out that says, I got to list my home. I got to hurry up and list my home. Oh, and I do want to touch on one thing, too, before I go. On the video I put out yesterday about the uh, alfalfa forms, they did not squish all of them. They just canceled a couple of permits that they put in for more drilling, but they are looking closely at the existing permits. Now, remember, these are permits, and uh, they had decided to revoke these two permits for these Saudi companies that wanted to drill for more water, get more water from our aquifers, uh, because A, they weren't filled out properly, and B, we just have a severe water shortage out there, so they don't want to have any more water taken out of the ground. Will they start pulling permits on the existing ones? I think as they expire, they won't renew them. So, and I think that for us, I think that's a good thing. Alfalfa is needs so much water that, uh, and we get that from the Colorado River, that that will really help us conserve our water. If we were growing things that we were eating here and that we use, then you could have a whole different argument. But this alfalfa was just getting shipped away. And so um, it's... It's something I'm glad to see that they're looking at, and I'm sure they're scratching their heads trying to figure out how to get out from underneath it anyway, but it's kind of like renting. You know, when the lease is due, you can tell your tenant, no mas, um, your lease is up, thank you, bye-bye, uh, I'm going to put this house on the market. Same way with these leases for water. You can say, well, we're not going to renew it, and that's how this problem will go away because a lot of people's wells are drying up out there, so it's been an issue. I haven't got an in... Uh, an update on what's going on out in uh, um, just east of Fountain Hills. And uh, I want to say New River, but that's not it. Um, gosh, I'm having a little brain fart here. You know what I'm talking about. They're trucking in the water and having an argument with Scottsdale. Haven't got an update on that one. So I'll take a memory pill in a couple minutes and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, everybody remember to join us back on Thursday. We're going to have our team Pat, what's my rate? McMaster is a dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby. And we're going to have a, a lot of cool guests. And we're going to try and dissect the summer market. Rio Verde, thank you, Jackie. See, you're our senior research analyst for a reason. Um, so we're going to have fun with that one. It's probably going to be a long one. I want to get some different opinions out there. And, I, and I, uh, I'm also talking to Dan Frio. Uh, national mortgage lender on what he thinks where rates are going and we'll get Pat's perspective. So it's going to be a bit of a deep dive. So I hope everybody shows up for that. Uh, it's going to be fun. It will replay. It's not live. And uh, we're going to give away fabulous, fabulous prizes for everybody who likes and comments. Thank you. Have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Take care.